Hey gang, this is Andy over at Falco K9 Academy. I'm here live, back in our studio, not in the home anymore, so uh, it probably looks just a little bit more professional. Uh, I think I'm getting my timing down on the uh, the operation of this new software. Oh, I didn't push my thing over here. Almost had everything perfect. <laughs> I want to make sure our logo is going on in the background. Uh, i got a few things to talk about, uh, a little bit about dog training, about having your dog's mind, and then we'll have a little bit of an update on what I've learned today uh, from the um, happenings over there in Kuwait. Again, just a reminder, as you saw, and I'll put it back up here again, it, our talk show uh, that we do on Saturday mornings is at nine o'clock in the morning on Saturday. And so make sure and subscribe uh, to this video. That way you can get announcements when we go live, especially on that, uh, that nine o'clock show that we do every uh, Saturday morning where I talk about news from around the world uh, regarding dogs. It has to do with everything from pet dogs, police dogs, detection dogs, um, service dogs, uh, dog food, all that kind of stuff. So whatever it is that's current, uh, we'll be talking about it tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Not everything in the world, but the, the most important stories, I think, as I look them up, I'll be giving you my perspective from those stories. And, um, uh, you know, we'll just have a good time. And we uh, will, I'll take questions. And if anybody has any questions, oftentimes somebody will post something that they want to know a little bit more about something in particular. And so... We have that available for you on Saturday morning. So if you have any, even if you have any training questions, uh, just let me know what it is that um, you want to know about training. I'm bringing up my my comment, um, and uh, you know what? This I have like three different types of software that we're working on, and one of them will allow me to see your comments, but I'm not sure if I'm on the right one. I will assume it's the one on the upper left hand corner. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Maybe it'll show me now. So if you have any comments even during this broadcast, because we're live, uh, you're more than welcome to comment. I'm not 100% guaranteed that I'm going to be able to see it at this very moment because I'm not sure. There's four buttons for me to push that says uh, comments. It's not that one because that was from yesterday. And let me try this one over here. So go ahead and type something in like, hi, what are you doing? And uh, hopefully I will see it. Nope, it's not that one either. Funny. Funny, funny. So we're getting used to a couple things here. And I'm telling you, I am determined to get all this stuff worked out so that I know um, what's happening. Uh-oh, somebody's calling in. Hello? Right. Only live can these things happen. So let's talk about having your dog's brain. All right. Um, having your dog's brain is a very important concept. And I don't hear a lot of other trainers talk about it. I'm not sh saying that I invented it or I'm the first one to even talk about it. Because there is a chance somewhere, kind of like the Led Zeppelin uh, lead in to uh, Stairway to Heaven, it's possible that they heard that song uh, from uh, that other band and they did not even realize it in, when they were writing that song, it came up. So there is a chance that I heard it somewhere and am merely copying somebody, but I, I believe that um, I uh, thought about this probably about 10 years ago uh, in regard to dogs that have aggression. And it is a really important concept, I think. And I want you to, um, to hear me out on this because it's really important. I think it's important for not only dogs that have aggression, but just simply a dog as a pet, a dog as a working dog, and that kind of stuff. And so uh, what I mean by having your dog's brain is that when you are in the presence of your dog, uh, I think that it's important for your dog to continuously be thinking about you on some aspect. And I... I I want to throw this out and I want to make sure and I have a little disclaimer here is that I'm not getting religious on you. I'm just telling you about the concepts uh, of these two things and how they relate. And so the Christian religion, uh, they say to always have, uh, you know, Jesus on your shoulder, on your mind, that you're always thinking about him in everything you do before you speak, uh, before you act, before you make a decision uh, and before um, you, um, you know, even talk to your wife or you talk to your husband is that if you have God or Jesus on your mind, that in most cases you'll make the right decision, you'll say the right things, and you'll do the right thing. Okay, so now let's go back to dogs. So the dog, I, w I, I believe that it's really important to have a similar concept in regard to your dog. So you set up your rules and boundaries and training and your life with your dog so that you can um, not guarantee, but you can make it um, uh, a, a habit for the dog to constantly think about what you are doing and what it is that's happening in this dog's life. And so when uh, the squeaking noise of the mailman comes, if you've done your training properly, if you've set your rules and boundaries that there's no scratching the door, jumping against the door, pulling down the drapes or pulling down the, uh, the mini blinds, 
whatever it is, if you've set up your training right, your dog will hear those squeaking brakes. And if it's had a history of doing all the things I just described, that when it hears the squeaking brakes, that it'll hear them and then turn to you and say, ah, you know what? Mom, dad, the kids, the whole family, they don't like it when I do that. Um, I want to do that. There's nothing more in my being right now that I want to go and growl and snarl and, and feel the power of chasing that mailman off again, you know, because they do it six days a week, right? Or they have at least up to a point where you train them not to do it. And that having your dog's brain is that when they hear the squeaking brakes, it's not attack the door, attack the drapes, attack the mini blinds. It's thinking of you and what it is that you expect from that dog in that situation. That's what I mean about having your dog's brain. And so in your training, in your daily life with a dog, it's not that you are a tyrant or a dictator. It's just you set up things through training, through when you open the door, there's a pattern, there is a, a, a rule that the dog must follow. When you feed the dog, having the dog sit and wait and stare you in the eyes and wait for your command to eat. When you do these things, you're setting yourself up for success in regard to having your dog's brain because everything you do uh, in regard to with the dog and associated with the dog is that the dog is looking to you for direction and you teach your rest of your family members that same thing. And I think it's very powerful and especially in dogs that have aggression issues or dogs that have real bad behavioral issues is that you have some aspect of them thinking about you and then making the right decision based on how you've set up the training, the rules and the boundaries in the life of that dog. So uh, that's what I mean about having your dog's brain. And there's more uh, that we have in our falcodogtraining.com website with all of our membership sites. We talk about that in more detail and talk about the principles behind it and that kind of stuff. So uh, even if you're a trainer, if you're a trainer, we have a train the trainer program in there for you uh, that is growing all the time. And um, I'm, I'm working on some new videos to put on the train the trainer program. If you're watching this and you know the bed bug detection dog uh, area, again, same thing. Um, we're working on some things. I, not too long ago, I put up a, an article I wrote on uh, accidental uh, click and train uh, uh, issues that uh, syndrome is what I called it uh, in there too. So in all those sites, we're, we're adding stuff all the time. So uh, if you want to learn more about that stuff, feel free to go there or simply give us a call and join us on one of our training programs. All right, an update on uh, Kuwait. Let me go to our, my Facebook page here because I got a, an article sent to me today that... Um, uh, just another source that, uh, that, that the problem hasn't been solved yet and we don't know that much more than we did before except for there's more confirmation from a military website who put out an article and says uh, just gives us some more numbers and kind of either confirms or coincides with the information we have given and so it says that um, there are the, uh, the deaths of 24 to 40 dogs and the possibility of 90 additional dogs. So what in this article says is that the, um, the contract that Eastern Securities had uh, that got canceled left them with 140 or more dogs. So at least 140 and maybe more dogs were involved in this contract that they had with the petroleum companies there in Kuwait. And when that ended, uh, it left them with 140 dogs. Now, their reasoning now in this article for uh, euthanizing the dog is they just could not afford to feed them and uh, take care of them. It was just too costly. So at least we're uh, in this article, we don't have the, the lie that all the dogs were aggressive and that it was simply a financial decision, which uh, many of us thought in the beginning anyway, is that they just didn't want to pay for taking care of them. And instead of looking out, um, you know, reaching out to, um, you know, the internet, it's so easy now to reach out to a large audience, right? Uh, I know I just looked on my thing, I have 22,000 people that have seen our posts that we put up over the last couple of days. And so uh, it's not that hard, right? You, you put something up, you give it a, a title that people are interested in, and um, you know, you can reach people, right? Uh, I'm sure out of the 22,000 people that are, uh, you know, viewing what it is we're doing here, and if, if any of them shared that out, we would be able to find somebody that, to take care of one or more of those dogs. And, um, and some people even ready to donate money to help save those dogs. Right? These dogs need help. Um, other than that, uh, this article does not say that there's any still alive. It doesn't say that they're all dead. It, we just don't still, we still don't have any further information. And um, the source for this one is the, uh, it's, it's an acronym, S-O-F-R-E-P, S-O-F-R-E-P. And uh, it's a military site. I clicked on it earlier. And let me just go ahead and do that. I know this is really exciting to watch somebody uh, type on their computer. 
Um, oops, didn't mean to hit that. I hit print, so I don't want to print. Uh, let me do it one more time. Search Google. It stands for Special Forces News Military Intelligence Special Ops. And that's the website. So it's S-O-F-R-E-P dot com. Yeah, dot com. And uh, you just go there and you'll see some interesting articles. Now, they don't give you all the articles because you have to join to be a member. Uh, but the person who sent me the um, article um, found it and sent it to me. So it's the special operations and uh, I already lost it. <laughs> It doesn't say on their website what it is, but I just read it out. So anyway, you can go to that website, soferep.com, and you can find that article. There's some other interesting articles about the what's going on in our military. And, um, and so that's the update from Kuwait. Uh, not a lot more, not better news. Uh, we don't, we still, as far as I know, have not been inside. I'm sure I would have uh, had some type of a message from somebody, and including my source that's out there that's uh, you know, looking into it, and uh, there's nothing yet but just more confirmation of what is going on over there. And now uh, the company actually saying that it's because they couldn't afford to take care of the dogs and, and that kind of stuff. So, all right, so that's going to wrap it up. Don't forget our show tomorrow at Saturday, uh, Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, uh, June 25th. We'll be going live, and uh, I think I'm going to be going live from our, our park again, our training location uh, out there in, Bear, in Brea on Berry Street, or just off of Berry Street. And, uh, and so we may uh, do some more stuff right after our live show and show you some live training of the dogs that are out there. We have a very large group. We have a good, a, a really nice, large, basic uh, group out there uh, with a lot of different breeds. It's really cool. So um, I, I think if I'm out there uh, for sure, then I will go ahead and uh, do a little live shot of us actually training some dogs out there, which I'm sure many of you enjoyed. I got lots of good comments from our last little live thing that I did with our, our first day of training, which really was not as exciting as most of our training uh, that we have on our first days. That was very mild. Um, we've had days, I know that there's one class that I had, um, I think it was about 20 teams there. Now, you got to understand, when I have 20 teams, I have lots of a lot of additional help, other trainers that are out there. We don't. It's just not me trying to train 20 people and their dogs. But in that particular class, we had probably six very awesomely aggressive dogs. And um, they all graduated. They all uh, made it through the class, which means that they were able to actually walk towards another dog, another human being, sit, shake hands, and hold the conversation. And we were able to put the dog in a down and hit the dog in a sit, and it was fantastic. So, uh, But this last class, you know, uh, the people are great. The dogs are great. It's just there's not enough, uh, uh, you know, dogs out there trying to tear other people and dogs apart because that really makes class exciting when we have that going on. All right. We keep everybody safe. Nobody worry. If you're not in one of our classes, I'm uh, kind of exaggerating. Uh, but we keep it safe. We understand how to control these things. We've been doing it for Oh, about 30 years. So, and we've had um, very few incidents. If I've had an incident, it's usually a dog biting me or uh, one of our other trainers, and that's about it. So, all right. So that wraps it up. Get your dog's brain. Go through some training, whether it's with us or somebody else. You want to have rules and boundaries that really uh, causes your dog to think of you before it acts, and that's really important. And uh, because when you have aggression, when you have these things, you want the dog to turn to you when it's thinking bad thoughts. Right? And that's really, really in the importance of that. And um, as far as Kuwait, let's just continue to, to pray uh, that we will get uh, better news and that somebody will get inside and find out how many dogs are left and what it is we can do to help in order to get those dogs to a new home so they can have a really, really good life. All right, I will see you tomorrow at um, 9 o'clock on Saturday morning. All right, take care.